first talk is by two speakers. One is uh, Andres Koropetsky. He was born in uh, Rosario, Argentina, and uh, got a PhD in IMPA. And uh, he works in the uh, Universidad Federal Fluminense, Brazil. And his specialty is uh, topological method in uh, two-dimensional dynamics. The, another speaker, uh, who is the first speaker, is Mason Nasiri, born in Abadan in Iran, and uh, P got a PhD in IMPA also. And he, he now works in Institute for Research in Fundamental Sciences in Tehran, Iran. And his, spe his specialty is uh, uh, conservative dynamical systems. Uh, so first speaker will be Professor Nasiri, and the second speaker will be uh, Professor Koropetsky. So please. Oh, thank you. Their title is the Boundary Dynamics for Surface Homeomorphisms. Thank you very much. Uh, I should uh, thank the organizer, and uh, it's an honor for me to speak in this great conference. <coughs> Uh, the study of area preserving diffeomorphism uh, is one of the main themes in dynamical system, which goes back to the work of Poincare, Birhoff, uh, Kolmogorov, and many mathematicians who worked uh, on this subject during the last century. Many point of views uh, has been developed uh, in the in the 20th century and after that, um, which cr uh, created a very rich topic in dynamical system. And <clears throat> during the last 10 years, mostly, uh, there was a very uh, uh, great activity on topological approach to the problem, to the subject, uh, which brings new uh, tools to study um, Area preserving diffeomorphism. <coughs> and this talk is actually uh, 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 the aim of this talk is to report part of this activity on topological study of uh, uh, surface homeomorphism. So, before uh, doing that, let's begin with a very simple uh, example, which is the integrable twist map. It's a very simple dynamical system. You have a fixed point in the center and uh, surrounded by invariant circles. And <coughs> it's, uh, by, as you, uh, it's clear from the formula that it preserves area. So any set like that is mapped to the uh, same area set. And if the... Um, and that this function phi here uh, is not constant, then you see that many different uh, rotational behavior are on this fixed point. Those with, um, um, those with uh, rational rotation present uh, periodic points, periodic dynamics, and those with irrational uh, rotation pr uh, produce a different minimal dynamical system. And this is very uh, well understood uh, by this observation. And um, it's a very, uh, very simple model to describe uh, 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 dynamic around the fixed point. But if you look at a t uh, general elliptic fixed point in a smooth setting, uh, there is some um, error term there and many of the circles are not anymore invariant like in the sick picture and this uh, creates many rich dynamical system and uh, resulted very uh, complicated dynamical behavior around the point and in particular um, there are um, many uh, uh, rich theory about the behavior around this fixed po uh, this point elliptic point but thanks to the KEM theory, um, thanks to the KEM theory, many of those invariant circles in the model case, previous one, are um, remain uh, invariant with most of those with irrational rotations, and between those circles, there will be present some um, 
analog, analog which um, has very rich dynamics inside. And thanks to our matter theory, we know that there, uh, also, uh, in those uh, regions, also we have very uh, essentially many of those uh, dynamical behavior of the model case here uh, as well. And <coughs> of, uh, of course, by the Poincaré-Birchhoff theorem, also we have many periodic points of hyperbolic type in those regions, and those periodic points generate very rich dynamics. Um, and um, we, we observe um, uh, existence of homoclinic intersection of those points, and uh, which pr provide a, a horseshoe and hyperbolic behavior there. So this local uh, picture, local dynamics, with very rich uh, uh, phenomena uh, and behavior there, are Mm, mm, not uh, describing everything around this fixed point, but um, a considerable part of the dynamic is understood. But what happened if we want to understand a global dynamics? Um, this is what we should expect. We still see many of those uh, elliptic islands and um, presented with similar behaviors, but many, uh, a huge part of the dynamic is not uh, described by that the local theory, and it is a really big challenge to understand. So to deal with this kind of problem, usually as we don't, we cannot describe everything about all system, there are two, uh, there are, um, several approaches to, to do that. And one of them is to understand dynamical system under certain conditions, assuming some hypothesis and to try to develop it and the consequences. And the, there is another way to think about it, uh, which is to consider uh, typical uh, behavior. And even if we don't know exactly what are the hypotheses, what are the... Uh, uh, assumption, but mm, just to, to understand uh, what is expected uh, typically for most system. And a very successful example of this uh, second kind of uh, thinking about the problem is the C1, CR generic dynamic, which is very successful in the C1 topology uh, over the last 60 uh, years. Many te perturbative techniques have been developed, and most of the important question has been answered. But very little is known for the CR generic uh, area preserving diffeomorphism. Only we uh, have kind of uh, very general, uh, very general um, transversality results, which goes back to the work of um, uh, works down in the 60s. And here is a list of um, long-standing questions about CR generic dynamics. And the, the re one of the re main reasons that the C1 generic and CR generic are so different and uh, the CR is much uh, harder to deal is that the CR topology is very much finer than C1 topology. So you need uh, uh, to... to and deal with the finer topology and proving something being uh, typic, uh, typical is much harder. So the first example is the uh, question about metric entropy, the complexity observed by the, the Lebesgue measure. And, um, it, and the question was asked about, uh, about the specific family of a standard map. Uh, and Sinai in the 60s has asked that if um, for mass parameter, is, uh, it, this example has uh, positive uh, metric entropy. And later, um, uh, especially Hermann has asked the same question for typically, uh, typical generic area-preserving diffeomorphism. 
The next uh, question is about the uh, presence of elliptic points when you don't have global hyperbolicity. This is also known for, uh, as I mentioned, many things have been done in C1 uh, topology. This is also known for C1 case, and the CR is widely open. And these two questions are really related thanks to this work of, recent work of Berger and Thrive, which shows that presence of elliptic points uh, gives uh, this positive entropy in mm, generic situation. So there is some topological uh, uh, um, question um, which relates to this and these two problems. The other one is the existence of periodic point everywhere in, on the surface. Density of periodic point. This is the was one of the oldest problem in, uh, in dynamics, which has been proven in many cases for uh, C1 generic situation. And the other one is that the presence of uh, homoclinic intersection for every uh, uh, hyperbolic point. So, and there are many activities around these uh, problems, and uh, one of them is a very uh, nice and remarkable uh, work of Patrice Lacowes and uh, Martin Sambarino, which uh, pr uh, and, uh, prove it f uh, who prove it for uh, the case of area preserving diffeomorphism in the isotopic of, of identity. And they prove that the hyperbolic periodic point um, always have uh, homoclinic intersection. And the important point, uh, thing about the proof is that they use um, several uh, um, topological um, um, tools in uh, the, um, including the rotation theory, the forcing theory of uh, Fabio Tal and Patrice Lacalvez himself. And another one, another um, um, ingredient of the proof is the um, boundary dynamics, which is the subject of this talk. And it's, uh, um, the, the aim of this boundary dynamics is to understand the dynamics on the boundary of invariant open sets. So let's give you a, a kind of result that is used there. It says that um, if you consider a CR generic area preserving diffeomorphism, then any invariant open set you consider with finitely many ends, um, then uh, on, uh, on the boundary you don't have any periodic point. Well, there is some exception that if you, the boundary has some punctures, the open set has some punctures, so they should be obviously periodic, but beyond that, those non-trivial components are um, aperiodic, so th there is no periodic point over there. And this uh, implies that, uh, mm, to, uh, implies topological restriction about the boundary. They should look like, the open set should like a subsurface, nice subsurface, and not like this surrounding around the uh, surface. They, are, they should be annular continua. And the generic condition in this theorem is very explicit, and this is fine, that shows that those two kind of uh, thinking about the uh, general dynamical system uh, are matched or very much related. To see why this kind of, uh, that theorem is relevant, I should mention a very beautiful theorem of John Matter in 80s. He, his, it says that if you consider a fixed point, hyperbolic one, for a typical area preserving diffeomorphism, CR generic, then these four branches of a stable and unstable manifold have the same closure. And the closure, we know that it is a very complicated object. It's a continuum, a connected compact set with many uh, um, complicated dynamic inside and topologically is also a very complicated set. So this is, uh, this non-trivial theorem is, uh, can be easily proved by the result in the previous slide as I give you a quick proof of that. This shows how that kind of binary dynamics is useful. 
suppose that you have two branches of a stable and stable manifold, gamma 1 and gamma 2. If gamma 2 is not included to the gamma 1, then it should intersect the, one of the connected component of complement of the gamma 1 closure. And this connected component uh, should be periodic and should be fixed up to a power of f. And so it cannot have a um, periodic point on the boundary because of that theorem. But when it, it, because it is intersecting this gamma 2, which is a stable branch, p should be in the boundary. Contradiction. That's all. So this, uh, this non-trivial theorem can be proved very easily using that boundary dynamic. There is another consequence of that theorem, uh, which, is, um, uh, which, is, uh, which has relation with the um, um, presence of periodic point everywhere. It's, it says that if you take any open set on the surface for a CR generic area preserving diffeomorphism, then there is some periodic point, hyperbolic periodic point, that stable manifold crosses this open set. In other words, if uh, in uh, any open set, everywhere in your surface, there, there is points that converge exponentially fast toward the periodic orbits. So it's a, very, uh, we, it's a weak version of this conjecture of Poincaré, which asked um, the, um, the honest periodicity everywhere. This conjecture, as I mentioned, is, uh, now, um, is, has been proved um, uh, in the C1 category by Pew and Robinson in the 80s, and recently for Hamiltonian diffeomorphism for every regularity. And the tools in this proof is uh, using uh, result in embedded compact homology in low-dimensional topology. So, so there is another kind of di um, uh, behavior, uh, orbits which are not so simple uh, uh, than, uh, like periodic point. Um, orbits with, uh, which are dense, for example, um, and this th uh, boundary uh, di and dynamic theorem also has some consequences in for about the transitivity. It uh, gives a characterization of uh, abstraction for transitivity. And using this abstraction, it's um, it's, uh, we, uh, one can prove that um, for a pair of the feomorphism, CR generic the, uh, pair of the feomorphism, we can um, consider the semigroup generated, and this semigroup um, pr um, has dense orbits. Such a result is very useful when you consider or want to, uh, to study the uh, Hamiltonian dynamics in higher dimension. In particular, there is a um, very active uh, area of research about the instab topological instability of Hamiltonian uh, dynamics in higher dimension. And using this, um, this kind of uh, uh, result on a pair of, a generic pair of diffeomorphism, one can um, provide new examples of um, uh, instability, topological instability. So we have seen that um, um, several consequences um, arises uh, using a simple theorem about the boundary dynamics of a surface uh, diffeomorphism. And so it uh, would be uh, interesting to consider um, uh, th that problem more precisely and to ask why and what happens if there are periodic points on the boundary of some domain. Why, uh, forget about generic condition. Consider any area preserving diffeomorphism. For simplicity, I consider just R2 on the plane and consider a simply connected open set on the plane. What happens if this open set has some periodic point on the boundary? So here is a result. Uh, it says that um, if, if there is some fixed point on the boundary of this open set topological disk, then the derivative of this for, uh, fixed point should have a um, positive eigenvalue. It cannot be elliptic point, for, exa for example. And if 
The periodic point on the boundary are um, always um, with eigenvalue different than one, which is a very degenerate condition uh, to having eigenvalue one, then the boundary, it should be like this. It should be a finite collection of saddle connection, which gives a very uh, rest uh, topological uh, restriction on the boundary. So, for example, if the boundary is not like, uh, in the picture, is not like um, a smooth or, si um, or say, uh, locally connected, then presence of um, fixed point means that presence of lip, uh, parabolic fixed point, or po um, meaning uh, points with eigenvalue 1. And, uh, a consequence, as I mentioned, is that there is no elliptic point on the boundary that was announced many years ago by Oliver. So, <coughs> uh, this result, uh, which is a joint work by uh, Andres and um, uh, Patrice Lacauwes, uh, is based on a uh, more general uh, 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 theorem about area um, about homeomorphism, which uh, for which we, are, we, consider area, uh, pr uh, we consider homeomorphism on surfaces and we try to understand in general situation the boundary of op invariant open set in the dynamic over there. And we see in, in this example as well, like the previous theorem, that there is a very strong uh, relation between both um, dynamics on the boundary and the topology of the boundary. Uh, and so I would, uh, I want to ask Andres to f follow the talk, uh, considering the the main uh, subject of this. Talk. Thank you. Uh, and uh, okay, so I will talk about uh, uh, the topological part. Uh, so I will uh, I will start from scratch, and I will restrict my attention to uh, homeomorphisms uh, of a surface. And the question that I will consider is uh, given an invariant open topological disk U uh, on my surface, uh, I want to uh, describe the dynamics of the uh, homeomorphism in the boundary of U and related to the topology of the boundary. So there is an interplay between the dynamics uh, and the topology in the boundary of this uh, uh, top uh, topological disk. By a topological disk, I mean a simply connected open set. As, as always. So uh, I, I am assuming simply connected uh, because it's easier to deal with. Usually, you can later adapt these results to more general uh, open sets uh, by doing some surgery arguments or uh, other kind of arguments. So uh, to, for, to simplify everything, I will re uh, restrict uh, my attention to the plane. Uh, to our orientation preserving homeomorphism of the plane, and I will uh, assume that the topological disk is bounded, just to make thing, uh, things easier to, to state. So I, first I want to show some examples to illustrate how the boundary of a disk, of a topological disk, can be uh, much more complicated than a circle, because sometimes when you say a disk, you can think, okay, the boundary is just a circle, but uh, as you see in these pictures, like uh, you can have points which are not, uh, you, which cannot be reached from within the disk uh, by means of a continuous path, non-accessible points, or in this picture here, or you can have some mo uh, some more drastic things like this one, which is a, a it can be seen as the boundary of a disk on the sphere, and it is nowhere locally connected, and this is a. a a set that appears very frequently in smooth dynamics because whenever you have a homoclinic intersection of a hyperbolic periodic point, well, the unstable manifold basically replicates this figure. So you get invariant sets of this kind very often in the situation and very persistently. Uh, a, more, uh, a more drastic example is the pseudo circle, which is uh, uh, something that when you look at it from, from far away, it looks like a circle, but uh, when you start zooming in, you see crookedness. You see some uh, very weird uh, crooks uh, 
in the topology. So uh, when you take a piece of it, you don't see a connected component, you see infinitely many ones. And if you keep zooming in, you see more and more of this crookedness, uh, of these twists in the topology. And so you end up with something that uh, is nowhere locally connected, but moreover, it, it doesn't even contain a continuous arc. So any map from the arc to this set, which, uh, which is continuous, must be constant. So it's really uh, badly behaved. Uh, it's, it's really topologically bad. Uh, and this appears dynamically uh, in examples of uh, uh, Handel and Hermann, uh, even in, uh, in smooth, uh, smooth examples even area-preserving examples. So it's not like this is a monster from the dynamical point of view. And then uh, we also have this, this kind of example, which is a, a, a WADA type continuum. It means uh, it's a continuum which is uh, the boundary of uh, at least three different topological disks. So they, they have the, common, the same common boundary, which is the black part in this picture. And this, uh, uh, this boundary is also nowhere locally connected. and uh, uh, it appears in dynamics, for instance, as the Plikin attractor, which is a hyperbolic attractor on the plane. So, uh, and being a hyperbolic attractor, it contains very rich dynamics. So it, it, you can have this kind of boundary of a disk containing infinitely many periodic points of different periods, uh, transitive dense orbits, and all sorts of uh, interesting uh, dynamics, and robustly. So this is not also, this is something that appears frequently. And a similar example is on the torus. If you can have a disk that spirals around the torus and uh, accumulates in some set, which is uh, locally like a counter set times an interval. And it's, uh, uh, this appears, for instance, uh, in the DA uh, uh, diffeomorphism, which is, uh, contains, in the boundary of the disk, contains uh, the dynamics of an anosov diffeomorphism, basically. It's a semi-conjugate to an anosov diffeomorphism. So uh, this shows that uh, uh, when you see these examples, what, uh, one thing that you, you, you notice is that whenever you have rich dynamics in the boundary of the disk and you have uh, uh, this kind of forces some complicated topology in the boundary, and not only that, but when you have this, this situation, you always see some kind of dissipation near the boundary. You always see like dissipation of area in the sense that some kind of contraction going on. Uh, uh, near the boundary of the disk. And this seems like a general principle, somehow. Uh, and th this happens in examples in a robust way, even in smooth examples. So, uh, let's consider a model case, which is when the boundary of the disk uh, is just a circle. So this is a, the, the ideal situation. So what can we say in that case? Well, in that case we have the Poincaré rotation number, which allows you to describe the dynamics on the boundary. So you have the, the rotation number measures the average rotation speed of orbits on the boundary. So we know that if the rotation number is a rational of the form P over Q, then there exist periodic points of period Q, and all of them are of period Q, and every other orbit in the boundary goes from a periodic point to a periodic point. The dynamics is really very, very simple. It's trivial in, in a way. Uh, in the case of an irrational rotation number, uh, we, ha we know that the dynamics, uh, uh, well, there are no periodic points on the boundary, and moreover, it's, uh, uh, the dynamics is semi-conjugate to a rigid irrational rotation. So the combinatorics of the dynamics is very uh, completely understood. And uh, uh, there is a unique minimal set. So in this case, we have a nice picture a ni of the topological, at least, aspects of the dynamics in the, uh, in the case the boundary is a circle. So what can we do in the general case when the boundary is some of these, uh, some of these uh, nasty uh, sets? So the idea is to try to replicate somehow uh, the Poincaré theory. And uh, a way of doing this, because this set, that the boundary of this thing doesn't look anything like a circle, uh, you first have to do something. And what you can do is you can use Caratelores compactification by prime ends, which uh, basically you start with a, you use it like a, one way of doing it is using a Riemann mapping that sends the unit disk to, to your disk, your complicated disk. So it, 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 you can think of it as a, as a coordinate, as a chart, to see your disk like a nice disk. And in this, in this coordinates, oops, uh, in these coordinates, the boundary is a nice circle. So the, the nice thing is that 
when you have a, some dynamics in, in you here, you can show, it's not trivial, but you can show that it always extends to the boundary circle. So you, can, you, you have an induced dynamics in this, this artificial circle, which we call the circle of prime ends. And, uh, and then we can try to look at the rotation number of these dynamics uh, on the, in this idea, ideal circle. And we can uh, try to ask the questions, the natural questions. If we look at this rotation number, and what does it say about the dynamics on the boundary of U, on the real boundary of U? So this was actually asked by Carter and Littlewood. Well, they defined, they defined the rotation number of associated to the disk as the rotation number of the extension to this ideal circle of prime ends. And then they ask the natural questions. For instance, what happens if the rotation number is rational? Or more easily, what happens if the rotation number is zero? Does it imply that there is a fixed point in the boundary of, of the disk? So uh, the answer in general is no. And there are simple examples like this one. So here you have uh, a disk which spirals towards a circle here and another circle here. The dynamics on this circle is a rotation here as well. And the dynamics on the disk just flows from one to the other. So when you look at the boundary of this disk, there is no fixed point. You can do it even so that there is no periodic point at all in the boundary. But when you look at the prime ends compactification, what you see is just this. It's just the North Pole, South Pole dynamics. Everything flows from one fixed, po fixed, fixed prime end to one fixed prime end, one po uh, points of the ideal circle. So uh, the rotation number, of course, is zero here, uh, although there is no fixed point here. So, one thing that you see when you look at this example is that if you take, uh, if you choose uh, in a nice way an arc joining two points of the boundary inside of you, what happens is that it's, it's mapped strictly inwards. You, it, it creates, you cut you in half and you have one of the halves, which we call a cross section of you, which is mapped strictly into its interior. Its closure goes into its, in, its interior. So this creates dissipation because here, sorry, here you have, here you have a, uh, some wandering open set. So uh, this was already noticed by Cartwright and Litterwood, and they showed that uh, basically the answer to this will be yes, except if you have this kind of behavior. So if the rotation number is zero, you always have a fixed point in the boundary unless there is this trapping phenomenon near the boundary. In particular, when F is area preserving, you can't have this kind of behavior, so the answer is always yes. And in fact, in a, in a recent work with Alejandro Passeggi, we have uh, shown that the only counterexamples are of this kind, basically. If, the, if there are no fixed points in the boundary of U and the rotation number is zero, uh, it has to look basically like this. You have to have some attractors which rotate, and the, dynamic, and the boundary of U is contained in the basins of these attractors. So, uh, in the opposite direction, you can ask uh, whether the uh, non-zero uh, non rotation number implies that there is no fixed point in the boundary of U. And uh, the answer is again no. Like uh, this example by Walker uh, is an example where uh, you have some hairs which spiral towards an outer circle. This outer circle, the dynamics is fixed point-wise. And these hairs are permuted in a, with a combinatorics of an irrational rotation. So when you look at the prime end compactification of this, you will see a Denjoy example with an irrational rotation number. But yet there are fixed points here in the boundary. So this is a counterexample. But when you try to do this example, you will see that you always end up with some kind of uh, trapping behavior near the boundary. It's, an, it's hard to avoid. So in fact, uh, uh, the first result that I want to state that we proved with, with uh, May Sam and uh, Patricia Le Calvé is that uh, it's precisely this uh, converse of the previous result, which says that uh, if the rotation number is non-zero, there are no periodic points in the boundary of the disk unless you have this trapping behavior near the boundary. And in particular, if F uh, is, uh, is area-preserving, you cannot have this behavior, so the answer is yes again. Let me be more precise about this trapping thing, just for a second. When I say there is trapping near the boundary, I mean that there is a union of cross sections of U, so it's a union of, thing, of halves of U, which are disjoint, and which are mapped strictly inwards. It's the closure of their, their image is, goes to the interior of the image. And they happen arbitrarily close uh, to the boundary. So we will say that uh, F has the boundary condition in U if this behavior is not present near the boundary. 
This is always true when F is are preserving, or more generally, when uh, F is, uh, no, has no wandering points in, in U. So it applies to, to, to the situation May Sam was talking about. So I will always assume the boundary condition from now on. And uh, so to summarize what I said so far, we know that if the boundary condition holds, then uh, when the rotation number, the prime end's rotation number is rational, uh, there is a, fi a periodic point of the period, the denominator of this rational number, and when it is irrational, there are no periodic points. But in the model case that I showed before, we had much more information. We, know, we knew, for instance, that when the rotation number is irrational, there is a semi-conjugation to an irrational rotation, what happens in the circle. So the question is, does this hold for general boundaries? Well, the answer is no, even in the area preserving setting, even assuming the boundary condition or whatever, because Handel's example with the pseudo circle that I mentioned before uh, is not semi conjugate to an irrational rotation. Uh, if you impose some topological conditions on the boundary, some relatively mild topological condition, then you can, you can obtain some, some results. Uh, for instance, we have a joint work with Tobias Jager, which uh, deals with the case of compactly generated confrontiers, and there the story is much more, much nicer. It work, works exactly like in the circle. Uh, and then the other thing is that we, we, in the model case, we knew that when the rotation number is rational, then the dynamics in the boundary is uh, trivial in the sense that everything goes from periodic points to periodic points, nothing else. In particular, the periodic points are all of the same period. So the question, well, does it hold for the general situation of a boundary? Uh, and the answer is kind of surprisingly yes, and this is the second uh, result with, uh, with Patrice Le Calvé and Maysam, uh, which says that, uh, well, to simplify it, we say that if the rotation number is zero, then every non-wandering point of the dynamics restricted to the boundary of the, of the disk is fixed. So what this is saying is that there is no recurrence in the boundary other than the fixed points. Everything goes, in particular, everything goes from fixed points to fixed points. So uh, to show how this is useful, let me explain uh, this consequence, which already was mentioned by Maysam. He said, uh, well, if, if you have an area preserving diffeomorphism, then you cannot have an elliptic fixed point in the boundary. Well, he said the eigenvalues are uh, positive, but uh, in particular, the, you cannot have elliptic points. So how do we prove this? So well, assume that you have a, an, an elliptic fixed point in the boundary of your disk. Then, well, this, this implies that the, the prime end's rotation number is zero because of the first theorem I stated. And then you can blow up this fixed point because I am assuming the map is uh, smooth. You can blow it up to a circle and the dynamics on this circle is, an or is a rotation, because it's an elliptic point. But then, this theorem tells us that whenever you take a point in the boundary of U, it goes from the fixed point set to the fixed point set. It goes from, from fixed points to fixed points. In particular, if you take a point here in the boundary of U, which is also in the blown up circle, it has to converge, accumulate, its orbit has to accumulate on a fixed point, but the circle is invariant, so the fixed point has to be in this circle. But the dynamics on this circle is a rotation, so this is not possible. So this is just how you apply this theorem to prove that there are no elliptic points in the boundary of a disk. So with similar arguments, you can show this other part, this other result that Mesa mentioned, which is really strong if, uh, because it's telling you with a very mild condition, it's just that there are no degenerate fixed points in some sense, there are no fixed points with eigenvalue one, then you can conclude that the boundary is just a, a union of arcs. In particular, it's, uh, it's locally connected. And this is not very common, if you see the examples I shown before. This is really a very strong uh, statement. Uh, OK, so uh, the, one of the key ingredients of the proof of this result is actually more topological in nature. And it tells us that the boundary can't be too complicated or rather, that if the boundary is too complicated, then you, everything must be fixed, basically. So uh, the, state, the precise statement, well, it is not very precise, but it says that the boundary is compactly generated, 
or else you have a lot of fixed points. A lot means really a large, connected, compact set of fixed points. In many cases, it means that all the boundary is fixed. I, I will show in a minute uh, examples of this. So, uh, what, uh, what do I mean by compactly generated? I don't want to be too precise, but the, 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 this is an example of a non-compactly generated boundary. The idea is that if you, if you remove a point from your disk, and you, you, then the plane becomes an annulus, and you, look, you go to the universal cover of this annulus, you lift the disk uh, minus the point, the boundary becomes something which is periodic by translations. And then uh, here you see that you have tongues, sorry, you have tongues from U which become unbounded in this lift. So this is what makes it non-compactly generated. This is an example which is compactly generated. Even though you can have uh, complications in the topology, they are local somehow. You cannot have tongues from U which rotate in a way. And this is quite a restriction. This is a strong restriction, in, 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 especially when you look at dynamics in the boundary, because it tells you that you cannot have orbits which rotate with different velocities in the boundary, because this creates unbounded tongues in the lift. So uh, to show consequences of this topological result, let me illustrate by considering uh, the pseudocircle, which I showed at the beginning. Uh, and let's see what happens if it's invariant by an area preserving uh, diffeomorphism. We know that there are exam non trivial examples where it's invariant, like Handel's example. But let's assume that there is a fixed point in the, in the pseudo circle. Well, the theorem I just stated actually implies that if you have a fixed point, then everything is fixed. The whole, the whole pseudo circle is fixed point wise. In contrast, in the, if you don't assume preservation of area, you can make examples where you have points which rotate with different velocities, and in particular, this means that you have a very rich dynamics in the, in the, in the pseudocircle. You have periodic points of all periods, you have a positive entropy, and so on. Similarly, if you look at this other example, the WADA, WADA type continua, uh, you can show that if uh, if it's invariant by an error preserving diffeomorphism, uh, homeomorphism, uh, then there is a power of the homeomorphism which leaves it fixed point wise. So it's the identity, the dynamics. So, in contrast, when you look at the Plikin attractor, which is exactly topologically, is exactly the boundary of these disks, uh, the dynamics there, uh, which is dissipative, is very rich. It has positive entropy, many periodic points, etc. But if you take a area preserving homeomorphism, which preserves this set, it has to be, it has to basically be the identity up to a power. So it's really, there is a sharp uh, contrast between what you can have in a boundary in the area preserving setting and in the dissipative setting. And similarly, in, the, in this other example, which uh, of a spiral in disk, you can show a similar result. Oh, by the way, I should mention here that this result can be proven also using a recent result with, uh, with Patrice Le Calvé and Fabio Tal, which has a similar flavor to the ones we discussed here, but uh, it doesn't involve prime ends. Uh, but this has to do more with the fact that you have three components in the complement of the, of the disk, of the boundary. So uh, in, in this situation, you have a similar, a similar thing. Uh, if this is invariant by an area preserving diffeomorphism or homeomorphism, uh, then uh, this, the boundary of U has to be fixed point wise. Uh, and again, in the dissipative setting, you can have very rich dynamics in contrast. So, uh, to summarize what, uh, what uh, the results I mentioned, uh, particularly if we assume the uh, preservation of area we get a nice description of the possible dynamics on boundaries in terms of the prime and rotation, rotation number, which is very similar to the, to, the, to the model case, to the case of circles, circles as boundaries. So in the, in the rational case, when the, rotation number, oops, when the rotation number is rational, it's exactly the same description that we had in the model case. There is no difference. When it's irrational, we can say less, but it's unavoidable because uh, yeah, it's, uh, there are counterexamples in general. 
So, uh, but what we can say is some partial things, like there are no periodic points. We can say that the rotation for every particular point that you take in the boundary, it has to rotate with the same average velocity around a point in the disk, which this is really a special property. And I haven't mentioned much about this, but it's one of the consequences of the first result. Uh, and also you can give some topological information about, about the boundary, both here and here. And uh, just uh, to finish, let me mention that there are many other results in the same, in the same uh, spirit of the ones that I uh, discussed here, uh, we, uh, which have to do with the dynamics in the boundary of uh, invariant uh, disks or general sets, without the assumption of preservation of area, for instance. Uh, and they are discussed in the proceedings uh, better. So I will stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I think we can take uh, one or two questions. Uh, if you have a questions, please raise your hand. Well, let me ask uh, the questions. So area preserving, can you replace by uh, some major positive on open set? Can you oh, yes, sure, sure, yes. Okay. This is, uh, in fact, the important thing is uh, no wandering, the boundary condition. And it calls in very general, uh, like no wandering is enough. Mm -hmm. So yeah. OK. Any other question, comments? If not, thanks, speakers. Yeah.